seen one take what action. It's youth, they're at a great time in their life, youth and you can have a lot of influence on their future and the future of the community if you can empower them, give them positive ways of being in the world, show them how to do things. So whatever tool you use to engage them is not as important as how you use that tool. It's exchanging those skills or that knowledge with these young people of what is the process of filmmaking in terms of storytelling. I realise that my role isn't to necessarily come in and teach them about different principles and different skills as though they want to go ahead into the industry but it's more what are some things that I can draw on that I know from my field that can help them achieve their goal. You know filmmaking can really be done in any situation. Just a way of storytelling that actually involves a lot of numeracy, literacy and collaborative and team building self-discipline skills. So we have five days, we divide it into pre-production, production and post-production. One day for pre-production where we get everybody writing scripts, forming groups. Sometimes they come with ideas, mostly they just make them up on the spot out of conversations amongst each other. Two days of production where we film and two days of post-production where we do the editing, sound effects and music. I came to work with the group in Anala, working together previously with some youth who wanted to make um, a short film as a service project for their community. So we're just going to get these guys and then so what we'll do is we'll, when we're going to want to get him, we can and then we get him. The group have been involved in a, uh, in a film project. They've all decided to do it on the concept of bullying and racism. They meet in the neighbourhood, like in a, in a park, so we were outdoors with them. We had to work with the limitations sometimes of a public park um, and also try and make the most of that situation and that setting. Yeah, we all friends, united. Okay. So before there's going to be two bullies. They come, they have bigger than Ben-Hur ideas. You have to squeeze them into something that's going to fit in the five days. We show them how to draw storyboards. I mean, they're not shot by shot, which you normally have. They're really scene by scene storyboards, but they usually contain some words. And we start from that. When they're working on their storyboards, we're constantly having a look at what they can do and saying, well, look, that's going to be difficult because we can't shoot that scene because we can't go, you know, we can, there's only so far away from this centre we can go. We can't go anywhere we have to drive in a car. We can't go anywhere where we have to walk too far. Um, oh, a lot of limitations. Yeah, there's a lot of limitations. So we were aware of those limitations and we we're applying those limitations to the young people as they're storyboarding but in a very constructive encouraging way and coming up with ways that they could other ways they could actually tell that story. You suggest something to them and it's, it's great because there's something going to work. They love it. They give a lot of suggestions. Which like, is really handy. Because like with the way we talk or the way we're acting or like the way we want to like um, like show the message we're trying to give to the audience they say like oh why don't you do it this way because it will show this and this so they're really accepting like you know you throw them an idea yeah and they, they want accept to incorporate it and they're really good you know in terms for people to understand the story there needs to be this 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 and this pieces of information going from the beginning to the end and sometimes they miss out on one of those steps so usually a suggestion i might make will be to fill in one of those gaps and I'll usually explain that in that way, that, well, I don't understand how you got from here to here. They give us more options, if yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. They're, they're like our they teachers, let us do what they want. Well, we more want options. Yeah, they let us more do options. Yeah, it, more it's, it, you're not learning something. You're, do, you're doing something you're learning while doing it. Sometimes I'll just ask them, how do you see that? How do you see that happen? I'll get them to talk me through, you know, talk me through it. So this happens here and this person goes here. Well, how is... And then I'll ask them questions. Asking questions and to help pull out the answers, because they actually do have the answers, but you have to be clever enough to pull those answers out of them with the right questions, and then they come up with it.
One group learnt the basics of using the camera and sound and light whilst everyone else was practicing and uh, role playing and then um, they started to just do kind of a rotation thing where one, uh, one crew would be filming uh, and one group would be acting out their scene and then we'd switch around. Action! As they were doing it, they were actually um, building and changing their ideas and expressing their um, understanding of the issue and expressing what they'd uh, lived through in their life. We play here. So you, why don't you go back to your own court? That's something major that I learned is not to limit what they can do by being too concerned with end product and maybe too concerned with how I think some um, things need to be done in terms of a story structure or writing. Let's see your face more and stuff. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, let's see your face more and like and look at the camera a little bit. Like the filming stuff, that's actually really new to me. I haven't really like done stuff like that before. It's a really good experience for me. Working a camera is some hard work and working like being a director and everything is so confusing. Yeah, it can be, yeah, it can be right here. Like don't worry about him. We don't even, we don't even mind that he's... And you want if you want a close up, you can bring it close, like right up here. By doing it this way, I think they got a chance to um, sort of capture or sketch out um, all of their ideas instead of picking, you know, the best idea or the most interesting one. Um, so they all got to express their ideas, and they also got to everyone to see what each group actually meant. Because, say, for example, one group, um, their story was that somebody got humiliated by a girl. So when they said that, you know, when they speak, use words to express that, each of us might have an idea of what that looks like. That's very different. We can't assume that everyone has the same picture. But then when that group comes, uh, came up and acted it out, we actually saw what they meant. Production, Society's Disease, scene one, take two. Action. If you've got the right environment of support, encouragement, no put downs, free flowing ideas and creativity, they just, they blossom. We were just sort of brainstorming and writing them down. Yeah. And then, and then we, we came, we kind of stuck them all together and yeah. made a storyboard. You know, collaborating and what that actually means um, in terms of listening to other people and letting their ideas come in. Me and um, Jin wrote the script for our, our movie and then uh, they couldn't be here so Jacka and Journey filled in nicely and mm -hmm. so they've been kind of adding to the script. Like there was original plans, but then they, they had input and it was better. So yeah. Yeah. And learning off other people that have got these things inside them that they know and it's a way for them to express what they know into us. Part of our facilitation process, of course, is bringing, making sure that the quieter people are listened to and helping the people who have the very strong ideas to realise that uh, other people can make their whole thing even better. When you're working in a group, your story comes out much quicker because everyone's got lots of ideas. So you just, you're not, it's not just you thinking of the story or just, you know, there's lots of ideas and you just sort of work with those ideas to make the story. Usually we say, what would you do if somebody comes up with an idea and they don't like your idea? You know, or you don't like someone's idea. How's the best way to go about telling them, telling them that? You've, you've both got good stuff. Yours is a very sh short, you know, you've done that whole short thing. Yours is long but it's kind of missing some stuff. Yeah, his is missing stuff but it's longer. Mine's yeah, and yours is a, and it's but it's a very short bit. So I think you'll be able to put them together. I think you need to have like so a lot of social skills as well as just yeah. camera work and imagination and stuff because if you're in a group even if you have really good ideas the film isn't going to turn out well if you're all disagreeing and shooting different things that don't make sense but yeah to convey your idea is really really quite difficult and sometimes it's not it doesn't work like when you go oh this could be really good and then you go actually that would you couldn't do that so it's hard yeah i have learned to kind of integrate other people's ideas and stuff into my ideas so like you get a middle ground idea. Yeah, I've become more tolerant of people <laughs> because I find it hard to, you know, work with a big group, but I think I've definitely figured out how to do that. We talked about communication. The biggest part of communication is listening. Listening and understanding. Okay, film is really cool. Oh my God, the other day I got a hamster. <laughs> oh yeah, and our film, it's really cool. It's about Oh my God, and it's really cute. And 
You see what we mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, as as we work this, we need to be able to listen to what they're saying and yeah. to learn how to do this. So. Yeah. Quite in a set. <laughs> quite on set. Oh, quite on set. You give him a look, then you start saying some stuff, and then you start harassing him, and then he walks away, and then you walk away, like upset and crying. Naturally, they saw what they themselves liked to do. And we also saw maybe this person is really good at um, being a director. So we, you could naturally see that um, people were suited to different roles. If there was a group of people and each person had the same skill and talent, then the group wouldn't progress. <laughs> some of us are weak in something. Some of us are strong in some things. So like if, if you're on a team, you have, you need to, the strong people need to teach the weak people to, to, uh, to do to do better stuff and to um to help your team achieve victory. So like, is this max focus? Yeah, it's max focus. So turning it clo uh, clockwise will make it um focus, and turning it empty will like will, won't make it. Some of them would be like, I'll do camera, and you know, some of them you can see that they want to, but they don't have it. You know, so we're looking out for that, and we're looking out to make sure that everybody gets a chance if they want to. You can be doing action and cut. Okay, so you can stand over here. Check on your you can go down a lot, Lucy. So, so how's that? That's good. That's good? Yep. Lily, you call action. I find it's good to not just say the rules of the craft, um, but to explain the reason behind it or the principle. Yeah. Same one, same thing happening, but you're going to have a close-up. So in a It's not just them memorising a bunch of rules, but actually understanding the reason behind it. You can pass these. Mm. Mm. The shades like covering you. Yeah, the shades covering you guys. At the same time, we found it useful to allow them to, for example, shoot a scene um, with an overexposed shot, and then they would review what they uh, what they just filmed, and they would see themselves that oh, it looks why does it look so white or it's too white, and then. We, we would explain um, that how they could adjust it to actually get the correct exposure. Get some light on this guy. Stay in the shade. Look at the panel. Keep going. Perfect. In the post-production process, I will show them things, but I always undo what I've done. Because what I like to do is really show them the possibilities. Because once they know what the possibilities are, then they can make up their own mind about what they want to do. See, that, that's the dark eyes I want. Yeah. I think not that. I think I will kind of want that, but then it still, look, it still tilts his head. Look, it still does that head yeah. tilt. So we're going to have Maybe to cut that to, Oh, would you like to have a still? I'll show you how to make a still. You can also use your razor blade tool over here to cut bits of audio you, you don't want in there. But that's what you'll have to do is choose which bits of audio you want. The equipment's not that expensive to do high-end level productions. So it is a kind of moment in history where we've got all the tools and we can use those to do the storytelling activity which filmmaking is. It's not about making the film, it's the process and how you do it is more important than the outcome. Through the process they actually learn a lot more and they develop a lot of qualities and attitudes through the process that no one will see. No one's going to see how they learn to cooperate. So if another filmmaker or anybody wants to work with young people, you know, do they have the best interest of the young person at heart? Each step of the way has to have that as its major tenant, as a keystone to the whole process. Are you building and enhancing and creating healthy relationships in the whole process? So each step of the way is about creating bonds and bridges between people and enhancing each other's life through that process.